Good evening, brothers and sisters. I guess you're wondering what's going on now and what I'm doing walking around at this particular time. Well, what we're doing is that seeing we have this lockdown and seeing how things don't really seem to be easing up, it would be a good opportunity to utilize this YouTube channel to, well, encourage people within the church to reach out and encourage everybody else in the church as well. So a few years ago, we used to have what's called an equipped service. We were people who didn't get to preach the word, might have a chance to preach the word. Some people who may not have been able to lead a study, give them a chance to lead a study. Some people who may not have been able to MC or, or lead us in song, we have the chance to lead us in song or MC. And this is what this YouTube channel is going to be for as well. But not only will we live stream our morning services, but we'll have a pre-recorded evening service or a pre-recorded equip service as well. So with that, welcome to Equip Service September 2021. And today we have the opportunity of a couple of brothers who are going to share and are going to sing for us this morning. People who we don't usually hear sharing and people we don't usually hear singing. And so with that, I'm going to hand it over to my brother Brad. And he's going to lead us in a song this morning. Thanks, Brad. Hi, everyone. Brad here. Um, glad to have you with us in this video. And please join me in lifting up the praise. Okay, here we go. <laughs>
worship his holy name wherever you're watching that video. All right, everyone, enjoy the rest of the video. Bye. Yeah, well, thank you so much for doing that, Brad. I really appreciate you taking the time to lead us in that song. After having Brad lead us in worship, I'm going to hand it now over to our brother, Chris Saw, who will share a message with us. Over to you, Chris. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me online today. I hope that you're all well, despite the current situation. Today, I would like to share with you a verse that I've been thinking about recently. And I hope that it encourages you. The title of this post is God is here for you. It is now weeks since the government announced that Sydney would operate under strict lockdown rules. Initially, the feeling amongst many was, well, we've been through this before. We can survive this next period. That was when the initial period was two weeks. The lockdown has since been extended a couple more times and there seems to be no end in sight to this lockdown. I've been thinking about this verse recently and it's taken from Hebrews 13 verse 5. Now if you're a believer, chances are that you're familiar with this verse. Hebrews 13 verse 5 says, Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because God has said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I've always known the latter part of this verse. However, there is more to this verse than the last part of it. I will touch on that a bit later. But for now, let's look at the latter part of the verse. The words, I will never, indicate a willful intention on God's part not to leave, not, nor to forsake his people. In the modern day, his people refers to the church, you and I. Prior to Jesus' birth, his people referred to the Israelites or the Jews. God has basically given us a guarantee that he will be with us no matter what the circumstances we face or the situations we find ourselves in. We know from scripture that this, this is not something that we've heard of for the first time. In fact, there are many examples of this promise being reiterated by God to his people in the Old Testament. The first example of this is when God appeared to his people in the form of a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. This was found in Exodus 13 verses 22 and it is when the Israelites were coming out of Egypt. Moses encouraged Joshua in the final days of his life in Deuteronomy 31, 6-8. The Lord reassured Joshua of this in Joshua 1, 5 before commissioning Joshua to lead the people of Israel. Another example of this is found in 2 Chronicles 28, verse 20, when King David gave instructions to his son Solomon before, during Solomon's coronation. And finally, the words of the Great Commission remind us of this timeless truth in, at the end of Matthew's Gospel. So how does this help us in our current situation? Well, let us remember that God is faithful. He will never leave us and he will never forsake us. In other versions it says, he will never fail us. Perhaps some of you are feeling discouraged at the moment, or perhaps you can't see the end of the pandemic, but know this truth that God will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Just like Israelites, 
And just like he was with Joshua and Solomon, he will never leave us. And Joshua and Solomon were dealing with enemies that were formidable. But we are dealing with an enemy that's largely unseen and appears to be one step ahead of us. Yet we know this truth, that greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. So we know, be assured, that God will have the final say. He is in control. Now let's look at the first part of this verse. It says, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. There are two things here that we are to be reminded of. The first is to keep your lives free from the love of money. What does that mean? Essentially, that means that we are warned against coveting. It is easy to develop the tendency to cover. All of us are at home at the moment and we are on the internet for quite a bit. And we're most likely doing some online shopping instead of um, going to the shops and browsing at the shops. It is easy to be caught up in the next, getting the next gadget or buy a new set of clothes, not that we need it at the moment, or a new pair of shoes or a bike, whatever it is, it is easy to be caught up with getting the next item. And so the writer of Hebrews warns against coveting. Instead, we're reminded of the second thing, which is to be content with what we have. We learn from the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Philippines. I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in every situation, whether wealth, fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or living in want. Our present situation reminds us that as believers, we are not of this world and that we are merely passing through. I heard one preacher say, Paul learned to be content in all conditions. It didn't come naturally to him. And it wasn't an instantaneous transformation. It is a process that, and it's something that we learn from walking with God each day. So the key to this process is understanding that everything, major or minor, is under God's sovereignty. Let us therefore have the right perspective and be content with what we have. So the, the reason we are reminded of these two things is because the Lord is faithful. He has said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. We need not worry about our needs or what the future holds. God will be there for us until the end. The Gospel of Matthew gives us a similar encouragement in Matthew 6 verses 25, 25 to 33. And we, were, we are reminded that it is futile to worry about what tomorrow holds, but rather to make the most of today. Each day has enough worries of its own. So because of this, we can face the future with confidence. Verse 6 goes on to say, So we say with confidence, The Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? However, the situation that we're in pans out. We know that the Lord is our helper. And we need not fear. We need not fear. So in summary, the first thing is, know that God is not going to leave you. He will not fail you, for He is faithful. Second thing is, we can be confident in facing the future. 
The Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. And third, thirdly, let's not covet after lovely possessions, but let us, let us be content with what we have. And let us have the right perspective in life because our time on earth is short. I hope you have been encouraged by what I've shared. If you have, please share it with someone and encourage them as well. Join me now in praying. Father, thank you for your word. We know that your word is truth. Thank you that you promise never to leave us, never to forsake us, never to fail us. We trust in you, God, because you are faithful and you keep your promises. You will never fail. Help us to have the right perspective in life and to be content with what we have. Just as the Apostle Paul prayed, the Lord will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. May you help us to fix our eyes on you, for you are the author and perfecter of our faith. And help us to encourage one another as the day of your return draws near. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching. Bye now. Amen. Amen. Thanks you so much for that, Chris. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our equip service. I pray that you will be open to allow God to equip you in the future, and you might be equipped to serve him, whatever the case may be. God bless. Have a good evening, and we'll see you guys in the next equip service in October. See ya. Hallelujah.